Hi, I thought I'd uh, do a quick screen capture of me playing around with uh, KiCad, or KiCad if you want to call it that, for the first time. It's the open source free PCB schematic CAD tool, and um, this isn't really a tutorial, I just thought. Uh, this is, seeing as this is the first time I've actually used it, first time I've downloaded it, installed it, and had a go at it, I thought I'd just uh, get a screen capture of my experiences of this, and to see how intuitive it is to actually use it uh, for the first time. So I've typed in uh, KiCad download into here. I'm going to use the uh, Windows, uh, the latest Windows official uh, distribution in here. And I'm currently downloading, as you can see down in the corner here, it's 146 megabytes. I'm downloading, uh, looks like version, I don't know, BZR3256 stable, the Win full with components dock install. So uh, once this is done downloading it, we'll uh, have a play around with it, install it for the first time, see if it's intuitive to use. And my CAD background, of course, I used to work for uh, Altium, and I've used Altium for 20 plus years. So it's my main CAD tool. And the CAD tool, I'm pretty um, much the only CAD tool I'm familiar with. I've dabbled with a couple of others, but never done anything serious. So this, so my perspective will be coming from somebody who's used the professional uh, Altium designer environment um, as a full-time PCB designer, or former full-time PCB designer. So uh, that's my background, and I'll see if it just works the way that I intended, and just have a general play around with it, and I'll let you know what my uh, uh, first impressions are and my gut feel of the product uh, when it first installs. So here we go, we're almost there. 145 of 146 megabytes. One second left. We're getting close. Here we go. All right, it's done. Let's uh, run this thing and install it. Got to bring this on screen here. I thought my screen capture program was supposed to be, uh, force it in the middle there. Welcome to KiCad 2012 112 set up. Let's go. Yeah, I agree. I don't care what the license is. It's open source. It's all good. Main applications, I want to install everything. You bet. It'll take 315 megabytes to install it all. That'll do. Won't muck around with a specific path. I'll install it in the default directory. And it's all looking good so far. There's a lot of PDFs. Look, there's a whole bunch of PDFs. Why? I assume that they're to go with components. Why would you bother including PDFs in the install build? I don't understand that at all. I mean, it didn't take long there, but it just makes for a bigger download. There's PDFs again. That's okay for the manual and everything else like that, but data sheets? I assume they're just example uh, data sheets to go with example components on the building library. Anyway, bingo. We've done. So... To edit or create, you need to install Wings 3D. Oh, okay. Right, so if you want to do any 3D uh, models and um, presumably do the 3D preview, then we have to install something called Wings. We won't do that uh, yet. Uh, check this box to open the Wings 3D web page. No, we'll do that later. Not going to muck around. Finish. We're done. So I will open up KiCad here for the first time and... This is what it looks like here. And I'm capturing this as a 1024 by uh, 768 window. So it's not going to be um, as big as uh, possible, but this is so that you're actually able to see it. And what have we got here? We've got uh, the EES, what is it? The EES schema, the, uh, sorry, EE schema. EE schematic program. I hate that term schema. I don't like it uh, at all, but it seems uh, popular in um, European countries to actually call it that. Um, CV PCB is the PCB module. It's all modular. They've got different, presumably different executables that do the schematic, the PCB. We've got PCB new. Oh no, that's the PCB editor. Sorry, components to modules. That's a it converts, uh, is that the library? No, I think the library's somewhere else. Gerber view, bitmap to component. Uh, excellent. So we can actually um, 
install, uh, we can uh, do bitmaps like you saw on my previous blog. I put the image of a platypus or uh, on my board, and you can you could put your logo, whatever you want, um, on your board. That should be really nice. That's neat, and uh, a PCB calculator. The Swiss, the Swiss Army knife. Let's open that. I'm curious to have a look at that, actually. Sorry, I'm going to drag things on screen. Okay, it's just got some well, track width. That's handy. It's got a trace width uh, calculator to determine the uh, current, um, to determine the trace width required for a specific current. So if you're designing a power supply board or something like that, and say it's got one amp current capability, 10 degrees rise um, here. This is what I'm talking about. Temperature rise here. That 10 degrees is a nominal uh, temperature rise, which you want to... Um, generally take as, an, as a rule of thumb. You don't want your traces to increase more than 10 degrees. You can if you're designing systems and you want higher margins and uh, things like that. But 10 degrees is a good um, figure. So they give you that by default. That's good. Copper thickness in millimeters, 35.035 millimeters. And you can do it in microns or mils anyway. That's a default uh, thickness. And your conductor length is 20 millimeters we want. Let's say we want a 100 millimeter power trace to go across our board. And we press this button over here. These are the formulas it uses to actually calculate it. It got it from the IPC uh, 2221 standard. I think that's been updated recently because um, all these figures are very, um, they're uh, based on uh, an actual, like a, a curve in the a, a characteristic measured characteristic curve in the IPC 2221 standard. Um, and for like, I think like 20, 30 years, it was the same old graph that which they used to refer to. But I think it might, they may have actually updated that now to be more consistent with uh, current practices. And anyway, uh, required trace width. There we go, 0.3 millimeters. I don't like working in trace widths, trace widths in millimeters. I prefer imperial mills. Oh, look, it doesn't automatically doesn't automatically change. That's a bit annoying. You have to hit it again. There we go. So your required trace width is 11.8. So you need, round that up, you need a 12 thou twi trace or a 12 mil uh, trace. Mil is the same as thou. Um, but uh, if you use the term mil, you can confuse it with millimeters and things like that. So, But I, I use those terms interchangeably, mil and thou. So if you hear me using... Uh, mil, it means uh, thou. It doesn't mean millimeters, um, usually. Anyway, there you go. That's the answer. You want a 12 thou trace for a, the board will, current, will carry one amp at, for a 10 degree C temperature rise at 100 millimeters length. Neat. Uh, and that's for, sorry, that's for an external layer. If you've got a multi layer board, then the trace, because the uh, heat can't escape as much. Oh, sorry, mil because the heat on the outer layers can more easily uh, transfer to free air and you have, maybe you've got some uh, a fan forced uh, thing through your uh, case and you've got just convection and general convection inside um, free air, a little bit of wind or something happening, your external layers are going to cool down quicker. So your internal layers have to be bigger. In this case, almost three times the width. There you go, 32 uh, almost, uh, almost 31 thou wide for an internal layer on a multi-layer board. You've got a four-layer board, and you're carrying one amp on an internal trace, 10 degree rise, you want 30. But if you've got components on the top and you don't want them to heat up by 10 degrees, then, well, drop that down to one degree. Let's say a one degree C rise over here. Bingo, you need a almost a 50 thou trace on the outer and 125 thou trace on the inner. Anyway, enough talking about that. I just think these cools are tool that uh, these are cool tools to have built in to a CAD program like this. Electrical spacing for various voltages. Um, once again, from the IPC triple two one standard. And I was under the impression that these uh, values actually. Oh yeah, up up to sea level to three thousand meters. Yes, they do. Um, these values are spacings for dielectric breakdown at certain voltages. So if you've got 240 volts running across your board, um, you want a certain spacing. So, oh, we've got some transmission line stuff. Excellent. We've got microstrip, standard 
Micro, we've got a co-planner wave guide, uh, wave guide. Sorry, we've got a grounded co-planner wave guide, rectangular wave guide, excellent coaxial. Uh, not that you need that on your uh, PCB really, but it's built in. Uh, coupled micro strip, and you've got strip line which is inner, designed to go on the inner layers of your board if you've got ground planes either side of it, um, and you can work out the characteristic impedance for a certain. Frequency, this is not like a field solver. It's not a professional uh, field solver, I don't think. It's just more, it uses your generic um, formulas for your dielectric constants. And there, there it is, 4.6 there and things like that. So it's fairly simplistic, but it gets the job done. And that's nice having that uh, calculator built in. RF attenuators, resist color code, heh, <laughs> neat. Board classes, there you go. So that's a neat little PCB calculator. There's more powerful ones on the market, but uh, having that built in is rather neat. I like that. So anyway, got sidetracked there. Back to KeyCAD. Um, this looks like, yes, components to modules. I guess that's the library editor, I guess you could call it, because I don't. I see a PCB editor, but I don't see this Gerber viewer. There's that, and they're the only tools that we've got by the looks of it. So this is the main... We've got a text editor, PDF viewer. Uh, what else have we got up here? Open, save, archive. Okay, it's uh, it's pretty simplistic. And we've got an empty project called noname.pro. And, well, I guess let's try the schematic editor. Let's open it up. And, yeah, Bubba, hang on. I can't. It's given me this error message. <clears throat> not found and it's actually loaded up into a separate window so there you go it's not it's like it is actually I presume like it's a separate exe and it loads up so it doesn't use the same uh, windowed environment so it's not like a unified program but that's just fine so let's see if I'm using my mouse here I'm using the center wheel the scroll wheel and that does exactly what I expect it scrolls to the center location of the cursor. So that's exactly what I was expecting. That's nice. It just zooms in and zooms out. Neat. I like it. Uh, we've got, um, I'm not sure what size page template that is by default, whether or not it probably wouldn't be A4. It might be. Oh, it might be. Uh, I'm not sure how we can find that, but uh, let's have a look at some of our, we've got our tools up the top here. Maybe we can, let's load in an existing schematic. That's an easier way to do it. Open, we don't have any open recents. Let's see if we have uh, any dev group homepage. No, there's no examples. It should come with examples. I'm a bit disappointed unless they're buried share, maybe, into demo, demos. There we go. Uh, pick programmer. All right. Well, let's try the pick programmer. Pick programmer dot sketch. There we go. Excellent. Would have been nicer if they labeled them uh, as like a demo subdirectory or something, but I found that no problem. So that's excellent. Nice little modular schematic. It shows that you can put borders around uh, parts of the schematic, as you've seen in some of my previous videos. I like to do that to make it visually quite nice and. I'm uh, enjoying that now. I expect the left, uh, the zoom works exactly what I want using the center mouse wheel. Now I expect if I hold down the left button, that will be pan. Will it be? No. Bit disappointed by that. I like being able to, now I'm using the right, uh, sorry, the left mouse button and that just highlights. Oh, highlights and moves. Okay, so left mouse button highlights and moves. I didn't expect that. I expected it to just highlight the objects and not move them but I guess I'll press escape and so there's no easy way to pan that I hate having to go down here and use these um, slider controls slider bars on the side I just find that really annoying I like being able to um, say do the uh, right mouse click and then just pan around and pan around because I do lots of panning so maybe there's an option for that perhaps or there's another way maybe there's a maybe the home key might be a way to oh home okay so the pressing the home key 
takes you to the full page. Excellent. End key. Page up, page down. Don't seem to do anything. Um, but anyway, I would have liked something that I could pan around much easier than that. But anyway, um, it shows the uh, junctions. The junctions in here are shown as, uh, as these round circles there, so you know it's actually made uh, contact. It looks a bit messy on the screen. I wonder what it looks like when it's actually printed out, whether or not they get rid of those circles. They very well may when you actually save that. Speaking of which, let's see if we can save it as, uh, save current sheet as, what options do we get? We get KiCad schematic file, and that's it. There's no direct export to uh, PDF by the looks of it, which would be nice. I guess you have to print it or plot it. Um, geez, they support old <laughs> PostScript and HPGL and those older formats. But you can plot to a DXF. Uh, you can plot to clipboard, which is a bit silly. But if we print it, then we can presumably we can choose like a PDF printer driver and you can print to a PDF that way. But it would have been failed to upgrade the user configuration file. Mm. Okay. What does that mean? I won't say it's a crash, but it looks like I aborted that and it didn't like it for some reason. So, would have preferred to see a direct PDF export. But anyway, uh, we've got some back annotate functionality there. We've got place. We can place a component, a power port, um, and they have hotkeys, shift A, shift P, uh, a wire, a bus. It can do bus-oriented stuff, which is quite nice. Wire to bus entry. Excellent. That's all good. No connect flag. Um, that will be used for your uh, design real check-in, your uh, DRC. So if you don't want it to analyze a particular uh, node in your circuit, like you've left a pin open or something, and you don't want it to give you an error message, you left that pin floating for a reason, then you would put a no connect flag on there. So let's see if we can actually put that no connect. Ah, it's just a, it's just an X. So if we put no connect on that pin like that, when we do a design rule check, it won't actually analyze that pin. Um, speaking of which, uh, now it automatically, no, it doesn't stay in that mode. Okay, I pressed escape. Inches, millimeters, good. We can just uh, switch, that'll be important in the PCB editor. And just uh, jump between inches and millimeters there. Um, Change cursor shape. Draw wires and buses in any direction. Okay, so that's instead of 90 degree angles, it looks like you can uh, do them in any direction, which is quite nice. Not often you want to do that, but when you do, it's good to have the capability to be able to draw any angles you want. Now, I was talking about the uh, design rule check-in. There it is, ERC. Error rule check-in. And let's library browse, library editor, annotate, you know, see, generate netlist, bill of materials. Okay, the netlist can go out to like a spice uh, simulator or something like that. A bomb, of course. Uh, we'll have to check that out. But uh, let's just run the ERC here and uh, test. Wait, has it already run? I guess we have to test ERC. See, that, that doesn't make sense. Why is it called test ERC? Error rule, it's just, there should just be go or start or something like that. Um, no connect symbol is connected to more than one pin. Pin connected to some other pins, but no pin to drive it. So that was that. Ah, look, and it's flagged it. Nice. It's put error markers there. So it's flagged that, that I've done something dumb there. So if I highlight that, how do I delete, edit? delete something okay so i'm in delete mode now wonder if i press escape i go back wonder if i press the delete key does it put me into delete mode oh no i just deleted <laughs> a component um oops uh control z thank you very much it's back all right so obviously the delete key does not put you into delete mode and that would have made sense um so i assume in the delete mode i can just go Okay, it's got several components because it doesn't know which one to choose. So I'm going to go the um, ERC, uh, sorry, the no connect. It even puts up the ERC marker as a, an object. That's a bit unusual. 
So usually that shouldn't be an object on your schematic. It's just a it's just a marker, but we can erase that and go back into the ERC here and I'll run that again. Test ERC. And there you go, it got rid of that error message. So that schematic as it came has one error in it and it's a type error three, pin connected to some other pins, but no pin to drive it. And there's the delete markers. So if you want to delete the markers from your page, you can do that. Um, pin connected to some other pins, but no pin to drive it. Okay. Pin 14, power in of component U5 is not driven. So there you go. It's a floating input. So the input to U5 is where? Down here, probably. No, U4. Uh, which is, U, where's U5? Maybe I could probably jump to the component. That'd be handier. Where is U5? Okay. Maybe we'll try the find capability. Find U5. Let's try this. Match our word. Just go. Okay, there we go. Bingo. U5 is... Huh? Oh, oh, it's a multi-sheet. Oh, okay. Must be a multi-sheet schematic. It's jumped over here and uh, there's our error marker. Sure enough. Pin 14, it didn't like that. That, uh, that net name there. Um, it obviously doesn't think that that's a power uh, port. So it uh, got confused because this is... I assume that when you edit your components, this component here, you can when you set your pins, you can place them up as power pins or data pins or not connected pins or whatever. You choose the pin type usually. That's how it works in Altium Designer anyway and uh, a lot of other packages. So uh, I assume that it knows that's a power pin and it should be connected to power, but it doesn't like having just that net name. Hence, it gave us an error message there when we compiled our schematic and uh, this is handy to get your error um, to you know if you ignore all these errors you have to make sure that you know what you're doing um, because the whole idea is you want to get zero errors before you push this schematic through to the PCB but yeah you can't always do that uh, a lot of the time you'll, you know you can be spend a lot of time dicking around trying to get your errors down to zero when you know you knew what you were doing and you know what the errors are and you can just ignore them but there you go. So I've got a multi-page schematic and I don't see any way to uh, jump around. It tells us about the part down here. Reference, U2, name 74HC125, component, library, and description, keywords. All right, so I jumped to this <laughs> schematic and I don't know. No, we're still in the same window. So I'm... Not sure what's happened here and how I jump to my multiple schematic pages. I've got to figure this out and I'm trying to do it in real time. So it really is quite embarrassing. Everyone's probably navigate schematic hierarchy. There we go. So anyone familiar who's used this. Um, oh, no. Pin sockets dot sketch. And that's the, ah, there you go. Root schematic. Okay. So it looks like. I'm not sure if that's the default term and it always uses that, but your main schematic page, I guess, is called the root schematic. And there it is. Okay, I get no problems with that. That's quite fine. And then your sub schematic page is under there and it's hierarchical and you could have some pages under that, I'm sure. Um, okay, I rather like that. It didn't take me too long to figure that out. Wasn't that embarrassing? I'm rather liking it. Uh, place power ports. So over here, here's our toolbar. Let's look at the right-hand side here. I've been going for 24 minutes already, and uh, I'm. this is one continuous uh, recording, by the way, and I'm doing good. I haven't really uh, found any major issues yet. I quite, uh, I'm not minding this at all at the moment. Anyway, let's look at the left hand, uh, right-hand side over here. Sorry, I get my lefts and rights confused often. I'm hopeless. Um, you can place a component. There we go, the... Uh, Sorry, the little tool tips off the screen there, but as you can see, place a component, place a power port, place a wire, place buses, blah, blah, blah. Uh, net name, excellent. Global label, okay. So it looks like net names by default are not global across sheets. I'm assuming that that's what I would uh, assume based on these two... Uh, 
and I'll drag this over here so you can see the entire tooltip for that. Place a global label, warning global labels with the same uh, with the same name are connected in whole hierarchy. Yep. So that's what I must that's what I gathered from that. And that's fairly logical that net names are tied to the one sheet. A bit annoying if you want to um, if you're used to just you know hacking a schematic together, not doing it hierarchical, but you need to separate the pages and the nets aren't uh, global across sheets. They they don't connect. I assume you've got to use ports. Um, did we see a power port? Place a pat No, that's a power. Like there's power or ground, but there's not. Place a junction. I wonder if it does auto junctions. We haven't actually tried that yet, but uh, we will. No problems. Actually, let's try that now. Let's draw a wire here. We want to go from here. And by the by the way, it's um set up the grid already, and the grid uh, by default is if you look down here it's got the xy coordinates because we're in millimeters mode so obviously this was an imperial grid there yeah there we go yep although that doesn't it's not rounded okay we've got 0 0.1 inch oh okay yes nope so it's a 50 thou it's a yes the grid is 50 thou okay so this is an imperial schematic grid and it's done in 50 thou so let's join this wire up here like this and it does actually um, do the 90 degree uh, bend like that so that's quite nice that works as I expected and let's just go up here just for kicks and bingo we're, we're connected and it removed those dots it auto removed those junctions very nice that's what I'd expect it to do now if we I expect it to auto place a junction as well obviously if we connect we're still in the drawing mode which is good and I like that how if you go out this way, it draws a line in that direction. If you go up here first, it draws it in that direction. That works as expected. So I'm quite happy with that. If I go up there, bingo, it's auto-placed the junction. But if you want to, you can go in and place more junctions manually. But uh, usually you shouldn't have to because it's... Uh, oh, maybe. That's right. Let's try this. Will it auto-junction? A line if you go over another so if you go over like that I do not want this to auto connect to that if I just go over it like this so if I go over bang and it didn't okay so it didn't actually and that's exactly the ex uh, behavior that I would have expected so um, in, in that case this here's a case where you want to place a manual junction so you get your manual junction bang I really expected that Eh, a lot of people say that's bad practice to do um, <laughs> uh, T junctions, um, uh, sorry, uh, cross junctions like that. So anyway, let's not get into that argument. What else have we got down here? So everything's working as expected so far. Quite happy. Uh, place a hierarchical label. This label we've seen as hierarchical pin in this sheet schematic. Okay. Create a hierarchical sheet. So you create a new sheet. Oh, let's create a new sheet. I can't can't pass up that. Oh, okay, there you go. It's a sheet symbol. All right, excellent. Yeah, let's just label it. Yeah, whatever. I'm happy with that. And bingo, that is your hierarchical schematic sheet. Now, interestingly, it doesn't show me. I'm already at my top hierarchy. I'm already... Oh, sorry. No, I'm not on my route. That's why. There you go. I'm in uh, pick sockets, and it's created that hierarchical sheet under pick sockets there so if we go back to root we should find that yeah there's that sheet there it is there's a sheet the pick sockets there and they're the data ports there you go it's uh works very similar to altium's uh port structure with uh you you, you draw a um a second schematic sheet and you can do ports going over like that so that's why you place a hierarchy or label what else have we got a hierarchy or pin imported from corresponding hierarchy or layer Let's go there, test, and bingo. That is a, how do, how do we spin it? Okay, how do we rotate something? I've got my, let's press space bar. No, see, space bar to rotate would have been nice. I would have expected maybe R for rotate. Yes, there you go. I guessed it. <laughs> that wasn't hard. R for rotate. 
There you go. And it's automatically uh, flipped the text over. I quite like that. And there we go. We've created our another uh, port there. That's actually done that as an output. So it's an output from that sheet. And this is clearly like an input going there. You can tell by, by the direction of the arrow there. This one's an output. It's pointing out from the, that hierarchical sheet. This one's pointing inwards to the hierarchical sheet. And I'm assuming I could end tool. I'm assuming that I can edit that pin. Now, what mode am I in? I think I'm in like select. I'm in select mode because I'm, I can just drag like that. Can I just double click on that? And yes, I can. I can just double click hierarchical because it doesn't know whether I want to select the sheet or the pin. So hierarchical label test. I want to do that. Oh. No, it doesn't let me alter the properties. Clarify selection. Yeah, have I selected the item? How do I edit the properties of that particular pin? I don't know. Anyway, I'm not too happy with that. That doesn't rotate, move, edit. Hierarchical label. There you go. Okay, so E for edit. All right, there we go. And I can change the pin. There we go. The style is output. So we can change it to an output. Let's make it a bi-directional. There we go. Bang. It's a bi-directional pin. Okay, that works quite good. So it looks like to select something and edit something, you've got to double click that and then press E for edit. There you go. Maybe if you're just here and you move your cursor over it and you press E for edit, Yep, there you go. Okay, so you've got to press E first. That's not too bad. Don't mind that. That's uh, There's no issue with that. I would have preferred if it just double-clicked that it knows you want to edit that particular item. I assume that's the same with this transistor over here. If I double-click the transistor, oh no, there you go. It works. So it looks like the double-click doesn't work if you have multiple items in there and you've got to select it first. It might be a bug perhaps anyway so that's that works quite well i'm happy with that the bc 307 there it is and you can go edit the q value you know you can edit the uh, designator here it is down here q3 if we wanted to change that to q2 for whatever um looks like you can change the size of the font i'm assuming you can do all this globally and you can global select things as well and do all sorts of stuff like that so uh, you can mirror it, rotate it, do whatever. You can add fields. Okay, beautiful. So we've now changed that to Q2. And if I want to move it, there you go. Move it around. So that, that's what you've got to do. If you want to move something, you've got to go press M. And I want the field value moved. Okay, that's not too bad. That's pretty neat. I like that. Okay. No issues with that at all. And... Wow, I've been going for 30 minutes and I've already got the gist of uh, the basics of uh, editing hierarchical schematics, I think. I think I could master hierarchical schematics already. And what else have we got? We've got graphics, lines and polygons and free text. Maybe, is there anything else? Just let me drag this off the screen. Yeah, there's a couple more. There's a place a bitmap image and a delete items. So it looks like you need at least... You need bigger than a 1024 by 768 screen, I think, to reliably use this. But um, no, it, no, it's usable. You just can't get access to a couple of tools down the bottom there with uh, that size screen. So if you're using this on, you know, a little netbook or something like that with a 1024 by 768, you might be limited. Sorry, I'm, I'm capturing uh, 1280 by 720 at the moment. Um, a 16:9 aspect ratio screen here but yeah i am fairly happy with that schematic editor so far annotate schematic perform electric okay the drc is up there generate netlist it's all there let's have a look at the bill of materials components by reference yeah whatever let's choose okay and it's a list format okay bill of materials it only gives you a dot list i assume it's a text format like a coma separated uh, value file we can probably save that we'll have a look at that those sorts of things later but there you go I'm pretty happy with that schematic schematic editor so far 
haven't tried to create schematic components yet, but let's have a look at the, uh, let's go place. Hang on, where's our place? Place component. Let's have a look at our libraries. Let's choose one. Select by browser. Ooh, okay, list all. Search by keyword. Let's see if it has a uh, BC547 in it. Can we search by keyword? <laughs> no. Okay. Uh, well, we'll go select by browser. Here we go. Now we're talking. Here's our library browser. This is the one, the library components it comes with. Presumably you can add your own. Oh, that's is that our current program? That's our current design. Look at that. It looks like it is loaded in our that's our current uh that's our current design, the PIC programmer, and it looks like they're all the devices used in our current project. I like that. That's rather neat. I wonder if you can then take that and drag it over to here. Oh, that, that would have been neat. If you could take someone's existing schematic and just import their schematic and then just drag. Oh, that's a bit... Maybe there is a way to do it, but I was hoping that I could drag that. But that's really quite neat. What does it come with? ADCs and DAX. There we go. Uh, it's analog heavily uh, depend analog devices ones there. 74XX series. That looks pretty complete. Pretty happy with that. Can't complain. That's an individual gate. I wonder if it auto increments. Let's try that. Huh? Oh yeah, there we go. Part A, B, C and D. It's got four separate parts because there's four gates in that AND gate. So that works as expected. Show De Morgan converted part. Ooh, really? It is. There you go. Hey, that's neat. <laughs> I like that. Oh boy, I wonder if that if it automatically does that or whether or not you have to program it in or not. That's interesting. ADC DAC and then the De Morgan part of course vanishes. Um analog switches, some DGs. Atmel, this looks wow. Somebody's a big Atmel fan. Whoever's done uh KiCad, there are a bit that's a pretty comprehensive list of AT mega parts. Wow, that's pretty good. I like that. Wonder if it's got the same thing for pick. Microchip, here we go. Yeah. They're obviously not nearly as big a uh, a pick fan as they are uh, or whoever's contributed that thing, but uh, I wonder if there's any central location where you, central repository where you can send your library parts and they actually get incorporated into the official build. I wonder if that's uh, if that's possible at all. But anyway, audio parts. There's a couple of audio amps and things there. 4000 series CMOS. That's not fully comprehensive, but uh, a good selection there. Happy with that. It's got like a 4066 quad bilateral switch. Neat. Connectors. Okay, it's got generic connectors, of course. 10-way, things like that. I wonder how you do the uh, footprint. If I just double-click on that, it doesn't doesn't do anything. If I right-click on it, I get nothing. So I wonder how you link in your footprint, actually. Getting sidetracked, zoom, auto home. Select part to browse. Okay. No, oh, okay, because this is not the library editor. Duh, silly me. I thought... We were in the library editor and we could actually edit parts here. We can't. This is just the library browser. So, um, Cypress parts, a few there. Device, it's got generic devices, diodes, seven seg displays, dual diodes, okay, switches, transformers, you know, all your generic parts. There's always a generic part which you won't find there, which is really annoying, but. Anyway, quite a few seven-segment displays. That's pretty good. DSPs, Intel parts, interface parts. Uh, looks like some I squared C stuff, whatever that is. Linear devices. Um, no, linear parts, not linear. Um, so lots of national stuff there. LM331. So we've got uh, op amps and comparators. Memory devices. We've got our. Uh, EPROMs and stuff like that. We've probably got our 
E squared proms in here somewhere? Maybe? No. Microchip, microcontrollers, more pick. I don't know. See, why are those microcontrollers, why are those pick parts not in microchip? Somebody hasn't tidied up the library there. A couple of Motorola parts, old school stuff. 68HC11, nice. Optocouplers, Philips parts, power. All right, now we've got uh, all sorts of power ports, VDD plus 3 volts, all that sort of stuff. It looks a bit messy on the pin, but I'm assuming that those grayed out uh, parts won't actually be displayed. It'll just be the red circle with the plus 36 volts. Siliconics. Special. Oh, there's a special library. Hey, that's an iSquid. That's a uh, pot. I saw a digital pot there somewhere. And so, you know, by all means, it's not a comprehensive library, but you wouldn't expect it. Um, but it would be nice if there's some sort of repository where you can go to. Maybe there is. I haven't looked. This is my first time using KeyCAD, so I've got no idea. One chip in the Texas, a couple of transistors. That's why we couldn't find our BC547, uh, because there isn't one. If I searched for BC237, would have found something. So, valves. <laughs> Somebody's a fan. And Xilinx parts. Oh, that's not comprehensive, but it's not bad. And there you go. That's our library browser. So we can choose to uh, uh, place one of those parts. Let's um, place a Atmel device. Where are we? An AT Mega. 161, how do we place? Do we just press OK? Uh, enter? I guess, there's no OK button. I don't see one. No, I'm pressing Enter, and nothing happens. OK, so we've got a parts browser. That's bizarre, we've got a parts browser, but we can't do anything with it. We can't select the device. So I'd have to go back and actually choose and AT Mega 162-P. Huh? It's got a... Insert component. There it is. Okay. Ah, view component documents. There we go. There's a PDF button. And it links. There you go. That's nice. It's linked directly to the Atmel website there. That's actually... Uh, that's actually the uh, atmel.com slash images slash documents. So they've linked in the direct link to that data sheet. Neat. I like that. Pretty darn happy there. So, and then of course we can just place it. Silly me. And, sorry, I've got to get that screen back. And there's our part. So we can zoom out while we're placing it. That all works as expected. Probably can't jump to another hierarchical schematic, of course. But there you go. By default, it looks uh, like the parts are see-through. They're actually transparent. Is that a good thing? It's probably not that bad, I guess. Um, so stuff isn't hidden underneath, especially when you're just hacking schematics together like this and you're placing components willy-nilly, updating schematics, you know. It doesn't hide the stuff behind it. And uh, I assume if we just press uh, M for move, we can place that part. No, what's the move command? Delete, fine, back annotate. All right. I feel like a dummy, and I can't actually move a part. Because I, I don't think I can just click on it. See, I can't just click on it and move it. Because then it selects. That's a bit weird. There we go, move. Yeah, it is, M. There you go, I was right, M. Ah, you've got to have your cursor over the current device. There's a bit of ghost in there. You see that when it first moved? I don't know if it's, that's my video card or not. It seems very sluggish to sort of update that sort of stuff on the screen. I haven't seen, like I can actually almost see it painting in the colours and things like that. It's very slow. So I haven't seen that since the old Protel uh, DOS days really where you could actually, depends on the speed of the machine, you could actually see it redraw the component and in what order it actually drew things and stuff like that when you're panning around and moving parts. It was uh, fascinating but Oh, there you go. I'm fairly pleased with that. And this is literally my first time using this. So I've been going 45 minutes now. And uh, in 45 minutes, I've installed it, played around, dicked around with the uh, calculators, talking about those. And I've been able to edit hierarchical schematics and do uh, 
design rule checks and use my component library. Haven't created parts yet, but gee, it's not bad. I like it. So I'll call that uh, quits for uh, this one anyway, just for this uh, schematic part. I need a drink. Woo.